Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nikita, I am 31 weeks pregnant and today we are going to be talking all things pregnancy. I sent out a bit of a, a request for pregnancy questions a couple of days ago so I'll be going through all of those and doing a Q&A with you. I'm not going to make this intro too long because this video is probably going to be long enough as it is. We are going from this face to um, a full face of makeup so it's going to take a while to get through all your questions anyway but if you haven't done so already then please do like comment and subscribe and follow me on instagram so that we can stay in touch so yeah let's just get on with it Right, so I'm going to start off by popping my headband in. This is a new one that I have. Well, it's not new actually. It's from Christmas, but the other ones that I had snapped. So this is what we're stuck with today. And I'm going to pop some lip balm on just because my lips are really, really dry at the moment. Maybe that's a pregnancy thing. I'm not sure. One thing that is a pregnancy thing is that I get out of breath really, really easily. So this video is a bit jumpy because I pause it all the time. It's because I can't say long sentences without getting out of breath. And that's because there's a tiny human compressing my rib cage and my diaphragm. So I'm going to start off by priming my eyelids as I always do with my P. Louise base. And then we're going to use the Jackie Aina ABH palette today. So I'm just going to pop some dots all over my eyes. Right, so the first question that I have is from Sam. And if you wonder why I keep looking down that way it's because that's where my iPad is with all the questions on it so I'm not looking at anything dodgy up on me so first question from Sam is when are you due so my due date is the 2nd of August it was originally the I think it was originally the 8th or 9th of August and it actually got um, brought forward a little bit because baby has measured big at all of its scans so yeah, 2nd of August is where we're at, which is not long, <laughs> not long at all. Um, yeah, I'm 31 weeks now, so just over eight weeks, really. Um, yeah, that's a little bit scary. Um, so the next question is from Claire. And the question is, how did you come to the decision that you were ready to have a child? Oh, that's a really hard one. Um, because there's, I can't really say that there was one pivotal moment that made me decide that I was ready to have a child. I always knew that I wanted children. Um, I always knew that I wanted to be a mummy. And when I met Jimmy, I knew that I wanted him I wanted to have children with him. Yeah, it was just a matter of when, really, to be honest. I mean, all of our friends uh, are having children at the moment or have just had children or have got little ones. And my siblings are triplets. They are four years old now. Um, and I was there a lot when they were born and sort of helping helping with them because they were born early. Yeah, that... that <laughs> I didn't really come to that decision, I don't think. It was more of just a, when you know, you know, don't you? I mean, there was never a time in my life where I thought, I don't want children. I've always wanted children. Um, and we came to the decision, actually, that there was never gonna be a perfect time. Um, we knew that, yeah, there's never, there's never a ideal perfect time to have a baby or to get pregnant. And if anything that coronavirus has shown us, then yeah, there's even even more so. You can't, you can't plan these things, really. So I'm gonna start with this shade Ginger from the Jackie Ina palette, and it's gonna go on my Morphe M433, and it's just gonna go in my crease while I answer the next, next question. So this question is from Tia, my lovely friend Tia. She has asked, how many children do you want? So. If it was up to me, or if it was just up to me, um, I would kind of like around three. Three, maybe four, I think. Um, preferably a mixture of boys and girls, at least one of each would be great. 
it was just me on my own for how old am I now? I'm 27 now. My siblings are four, so it was me on my own for 22, 23 years. Um, and I loved it. <laughs> I loved being an only child. And um, but I would like to have more than one child, definitely, because you know I I didn't have. No, I didn't have anyone to play with because I have a lot of cousins on my mum's side of the family. Sorry, I decided to change my 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 brush to the Morphe Jeffree Star JS9 because it was not playing ball on the other brush. Um, yeah, so I grew up as an only child and I had I had plenty of people to play with and to be a child with because my mum's family is so big. I have like 22 first cousins or something ridiculous like that. And um, yeah, they were always around. We always spent so much time with them that it wasn't a problem that I was an only child. Child won't have um, as many cousins as I did because Jimmy and I don't have as many siblings as my mum did. So I want it to. I want baby to have siblings. I really do. I think it's quite important. Um, just to have that when you're growing up, really. But yeah, Jimmy wants two, I want three or four. Hopefully I'll get my way. Um, right, so the next question, it's another one from Tia, and it is, was this pregnancy planned? And the answer to that question is yes, it was. We had, like I said, we decided that after the wedding, we were going to start trying and yeah it just happened much quicker than I expected it to but we will get on to that later but yes to answer your question Tia it was planned so I'm going to go in with credit this one here the darker brown on my Morphe M506 I need to catch my breath right so the next question is from Kelly my lovely friend Kelly and the question is, how long did you try for the baby? So we were incredibly, incredibly, incredibly fortunate. And I make no hesitation in saying that and understanding that we were inc incredibly fortunate because a lot of people try for a baby for a very, very long time um, with a lot less success than we've had. But we got married on September the 20th in Hawaii, as you may know. And then we came back and we had a religious ceremony over here in the UK on October the 12th. And we actually conceived on November the 12th. And the reason I know that is because like ovulation and all that sort of stuff, you can, you can figure th these things out when you're trying. So yeah, we were trying for about from the first wedding in Hawaii to when we fell pregnant was about seven weeks. Seven weeks it took to conceive a baby for us. Um, and I wasn't doing all of the, you know, real ovulation tracking where you like pee on the stick and see whether you're peaking or anything like that. I, I wasn't doing that. I was, we were just rolling with the punches and seeing what happened. <laughs> Um, I'm obviously not going to go into too much detail. You, most of you will know how a baby's made, but um, yeah, if you don't know, ask your parents, don't ask me. Right, the next question is from my friend Mary, musical Mary as we like to call her, and she has asked, did you get a sense that you were pregnant before you knew for sure? Yes. Yes, I did. My first symptom or the first sign that I had was that I had really, really, really sore boobs. And um, they were sore pretty much within 24 hours. Um, it's the way your hormones spike in your body mean that, yeah, your hormones just go a little bit cray cray. And I knew straight away. I said to like Jimmy didn't believe me. <laughs> he he refused to believe me until I peed on a stick and it told him I was pregnant. But I said to him, 
there's no way my boobs are meant to be this sore. And they were sore to the point where, like, just walking around, going shopping, they would hurt with every footstep that I took. Every tiny bit of impact that they felt <laughs> was sore. Um, and that's quite a typical telltale sign, I think. Most women, some women don't notice it, obviously, um, but most women, when they're trying to have a baby, the, the first sign that they notice is their sore boobs. Don't get me wrong, I do, like, I've had sore boobs before, like, with your time of the month and stuff like that. I know, TMI, but hey ho. Um, I've had sore boobs before, but this was nothing, just nothing in comparison to any other pain I felt before. To the point where I was like, I've either, I'm either pregnant or there's actually something wrong with me and I need to go to the doctor to find out why I've got sore boobs. But yeah, I was, I was pretty convinced that it was because I was pregnant. And it was. <laughs> so, the next question is another one from Tia. I've tried to put these in sort of like a chronological order of trying for a baby to getting pregnant, being pregnant and then like what the future may hold. That's the sort of order these questions are going in so that we're not darting around everywhere. So, oh, hello. Baby's having a bit of a roll around. Ow. Okay, so the next question is from Tia. Again, the next two questions are from Tia. And it is, how did you feel when you found out you were pregnant? <laughs> um, how did I feel? I was over the moon. Um, and, like if anyone ever tells you that they find out they're pregnant and they're not scared, a little bit scared at least, or nervous, then they're lying because <laughs> you find out that you've got this little human growing inside you and that human is your is going to be your responsibility for the rest of your life, really. And they like you may say that like a parent's job is done once they're eighteen or whatever. Or like I know some people say that, but my life will never be the same again. I'll never just have to worry about me. Even when my child's forty something, I'm probably still going to be worried about it. Like just like how my mum is with me and I wouldn't change that for the world, but there is that tiny, tiny, tiny element of fear that you you just want to get it right, you know? Um, yeah, so I was completely over the moon and so excited and so ready, but at the same time, like, wow, there's a whole human that's about to be relying on me. And not, not even about to be relying on me, that is relying on me, firstly, for the first nine months just to get it into this world. And then once it is in this world, to, to care for it and make sure that it turns out to be a good human. <laughs> and it's, it may sound really, really stupid, but it's, it's, it's a big thing having a baby. Like, it's not something that I think should just be taken with a pinch of salt, because it's not. But yeah, when I found out I was pregnant, I cried, I smiled, I cried some more, I smiled some more. I was walking around like the cat that had got the cream all day. Oh my God, that is not an innuendo. Teresa, I know what you're thinking. It's not an innuendo, please don't. But I was really, really happy. Um, and I was at home uh, when we did the test and we decided we weren't gonna tell anyone we're just going to keep it to ourselves because we did the test on the 1st of December and we made it our parents Christmas present or part of their Christmas presents um, telling them that they were going to be grandparents so we had 24 days of keeping it to ourselves which was hard really hard okay so the next question is another one from Tia like I said is how did Jimmy react when you told him you were pregnant so I didn't actually tell him as such because so I'd said to him once we'd started trying I said when we do do this test are we going to do it together or 
do you want me to do it and like surprise you when I find out and he said no I want to do it together because I know you'll be sad if it's if it's negative so I want to be there for you which bless him was really really sweet and it wouldn't have just been just me that would have been sad if it, if it was negative I think he would have been just as sad as as I would have been um but yeah so we did it to well I say we did it together I went into the bathroom and I peed on the stick and that was because we were at home in my mum's house so it, like it was first thing in the morning it was seven o'clock in the morning I couldn't sleep anymore so I wanted to get up first thing on the Sunday morning on Sunday morning and do this test. I had to know, I couldn't wait any longer. It was like, normally we love a line at the weekend, but that weekend I just couldn't wait any longer. I needed to know. So I went to the bathroom on my own, peed on stick, and then I wrapped it up in tissue paper, put it in my dressing gown pocket and took it back to the bedroom. And we waited however long Obviously, like, I washed my hands and stuff. I'm not that dirty. I just didn't think you needed to know that. But now I realise you do. So Jimmy was waiting for me to come back. And I came back with the test wrapped up in tissue paper. Tissue wrapped up in toilet roll. And came back. And we both sat down and, like, left it on the side. Wrapped up for however whatever the allocated time was. I think it was, like, 90 seconds or something like that. I can't remember. We got one of those digital ones, the clear blue, not the ones that tells you how many weeks, but the one that it just says pregnant or not pregnant, basically. So we sat down and had it in front of us, still wrapped up, and we waited and waited and waited and waited. And Jimmy had been like got so excited that he had got up and like was just he hadn't brushed his teeth or anything like that. He hadn't even put his glasses on. So we waited for ages for this test or it felt like ages it probably wasn't and looked at it together and it said pregnant and I started crying but obviously Jimmy didn't have his glasses on did he or his contact lenses in so he couldn't see what it said <laughs> so as much as he didn't want me to like do it on my own and then surprise him the way that we did it was kind of perfect because I still got to tell him I still got to say we're pregnant, we're having, like, it says we're pregnant because he couldn't read it. But it was just, it was just typical us, you know, like something so typically silly that we would do, or he would do, is forget to put his glasses on when he needs to read a pregnancy test. So I'm doing a bit of a halo eye, I think. That seems to be what's happening. Um, and I'm just popping some more P. Louise base down because it's not as bright as I want it to be. Sorry, I couldn't talk and do that at the same time. If I talked and tried to multitask with that, it was probably going to cock up the whole look. So the next question is from Mary, another one. And it is, what does it feel like to be pregnant? Wow, that's a... I could sit here all day and answer that question, I reckon. Because... It's... Weird. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. But weird. So the first 12 weeks, I was very, very anxious. Um, I was... And I couldn't share my anxiety with anyone, especially for the first sort of three weeks when even my mum didn't know because we wanted to tell her on Christmas Day. Um, yeah, so the first first three weeks that no one else knew and it was just me and Jimmy was a little bit, bit scary. Um, there was nothing that happened. Like there was no, I didn't have any bleeding or anything like that. There was no signs to tell me that I had anything to worry about. I just got my stress head on and couldn't stop panicking about it. Right, so I'm just gonna go in with Lituation, this one, and Sponsored, this one here for the for the halo. Um, 
so yeah that i felt quite anxious until the 12 week scan and as soon as we'd had the 12 week scan my like all my worries went out the window and i felt absolutely fine um well i say absolutely fine i i was a lot less anxious than i was before yeah and then and then after 12 weeks you can start buying stuff well I say you can, like you can buy stuff when you want. It's that, it's just, it's what you do, isn't it? <laughs> it's, you wait until 12 weeks to, to start really believing that it's gonna happen. And then once I gave myself the, the right to believe, I guess, um, everything was much, much better and so much more chilled and I really relaxed into it then. I started enjoying being pregnant rather than just panicking the whole time. Um, I'm just going to wet these, sh these shimmer shades. Sorry guys, I had to just go ahead and finish the um, eye look on my own because I couldn't multitask and talk and it was not going the way I wanted it to. So I'm just going to uh, top it off with this Stila Stylish Eye Topper. And I'm just going to go down the middle. Maybe I'll use the dough for that. No, or not. That's just taking the colour off. Hey. Yeah, that's more of the effect I wanted. Okay guys, I'm just going to clean out the fallout under my eyes quickly and then I'll come back and we will do the base while we go through some more questions. Sorry guys, I had to go for a wee break which happens very very often when you're pregnant obviously. So now we are ready to get on with my base and I'm going to start by priming with my Anna Sui... Anna Sui... Su with this primer. So, next question, back to the questions, is from Mary, and she says, has the baby been kicking and moving around, etc? Yes. Yes, it has, indeed. Um, so I first felt the baby move at 16 weeks. Um, I didn't actually know that I had felt the baby move, it just felt a bit like butterflies. And then when I googled it, when I googled what it feels like to feel baby moving, it said that it felt like butterflies. And that's exactly what I felt. It felt just like butterflies. So then baby's movement started getting bigger and at 18 weeks, Jimmy managed to feel the baby moving. It was only tiny and I think we were quite lucky that he got to feel it so early. Um, but yeah, so we felt it from the outside at 18 weeks and I did manage to get um, a little little video of it to show my mum um, of the baby moving. But I won't put it on here because it's quite naked. There's nakedness in it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so as I've got more and more pregnant and the pregnancy's got further along, baby's movements have definitely got much bigger. The movements have got a lot easier to feel, especially from the outside for Jimmy. And yeah, the baby's just definitely moving around and wriggling around a lot. And it's quite important that you count the kicks um, just to monitor your baby. Because if your baby decreases in uh, the amount that it moves per day, then um, you should be contacting your midwife really. So it's quite important that you monitor them as much as you can and you'll get used to, like I've got used to baby's pattern and how baby's been moving around and when it moves around the most and when it moves around or when it's asleep. Now that I'm at 32 weeks you can feel really distinct movements. So you can feel when baby changes position or you can feel when baby's back is in a certain place or um, like if it's a kick or an elbow you can tell which one it is because you can you can kind of feel the outline of whatever it's just thumped you with, whether it's an elbow or a foot. So that's quite nice. I really enjoy that. 
even even when it kicks me in the ribs <laughs> um, which can actually be quite painful but I say that when baby comes and it's not inside me anymore I'm gonna be missing all of those things so I'll take that at the moment I will take being kicked in the ribs because soon it's not gonna be inside me anymore and I'm really gonna miss it <laughs> And I know a lot of other mums that I've spoken to, or mums-to-be, feel that way as well. So you have to start sharing it with the outside world. I don't want to do that. I was an only child for 22 years. Of course I don't want to share it with anything. Right, now I'm going to cream contour with my Revolution Pro HD Cream Contour Palette. Normally I use the powder one, but I completely forgot that I had this one. It's in the same shade, in light medium. Um, so I'm going to use the same shades that I would in my other one, just the cream version. And I'm going to use my Morphe E62 brush to pop the colour down and then I will blend it out with my normal cream contour blush. Brush. So the next question that we've got is, have you had any cravings? Um, so, yes and no. I haven't had the kind of cravings that most pregnant women get where they're like evil <laughs> well I don't know that might have just been horror stories that we've heard from our friends that have had babies but I know that some pregnant women get cravings that they feel like if they don't have them they're gonna die or they're gonna like explode with anger or something I haven't had any of them I've just had the odd sort of oh I fancy this oh I fancy that but that's the sort of craving, oh, nothing different to like if I craved something in real life anyway. So for example, at the moment, um, I have been fancying Snickers, Snickers chocolate bars. And that is mainly because um, the other day on a Zoom call, Rosie was eating a Snickers ice cream and she was really, really enjoying it. And it made me really, really want one. So I had a Snickers bar. They didn't have any of the ice creams, but that was okay. Like I wasn't, I wasn't a really angry pregnant woman uh, that needed a Snickers. I just fancied it. Cookie dough ice cream, but that's again just because I like it. Not that, like it's a life or death thing. Although Jimmy has made a habit, as the girls will know, of stealing my cookie dough ice cream very often from his unborn child but he does replace it or buy me other things so I can't complain too much so the next question is from Amanda and she said is pregnancy what you imagined it would be so I'm gonna have to use the c word here I might have to use it a couple of times to be honest because there's no way to really talk about my pregnancy without involving coronavirus um yeah my pregnancy has not been what I expected it to be at all because of coronavirus. I won't talk about coronavirus too much now because there is actually a question relate later on relating to coronavirus. So I've been very, very lucky with my pregnancy. I've had uh, little to no symptoms at all. Um, I haven't had morning sickness, which I know is a big, big thing and can be a real hard thing for pregnant ladies to go through. So I'm just going to uh, use my e.l.f. camo concealer in the shade Tan Sand to conceal my face. Um, the only symptoms that I have had with pregnancy is um, needing to go for a wee a lot and my nose has been a bit of an issue so I'm either completely bunged up and can hardly breathe or it's running but 90% of the time it's that I'm bunged up and getting breathless which I have to admit I'm really struggling with in this video if you can't tell already so in the first trimester so that in the first 12 weeks I did have the odd migraine um, and my midwife told me that that was because of I was either dehydrated or it was to do with my body adjusting to the increased blood flow um, in in my body to support the baby but they went after a little while and touch wood 
they haven't come back because they were horrible. But again, I would rather have had them than morning sickness because I know that some mums can get morning sickness really, really badly. Can I just say this sponge is amazing. It's incredible. I much prefer it to my Morphe sponge. And it's £1.50. I think I'm going to order some more. Shipping does take a while though on K Rose B um, because she's on her own. So she has to process all the orders by herself. Um, but they are well worth the wait. So this question is from Katrina and the question is, what is your least favorite thing to be asked while pregnant? Um, <laughs> so there's one family member in particular, I'm not gonna mention any names, but every single time they messaged me or spoke to me or spoke to Jimmy, they said, are you getting bigger and bigger? Now, I'm trying to put this in a nice way. I am pregnant. Of course I'm getting bigger and bigger. Like what, what, what do you expect my answer to be? I'm never gonna turn around and say no, am I? Because I'm growing a human. So of course I'm gonna be getting bigger and bigger. There was days I kind of wanted to turn around and just be like, no, actually the bumps just disappeared overnight just to see what they said. But I'm not that much of a see you next Tuesday. And you know what? It, it, I wouldn't mind that question once or twice from the same person, but th like this was pretty much every day. Are you getting bigger and bigger? Are you getting bigger and bigger? Yes, I'm getting bigger and bigger. I'm growing a baby. I'm getting bigger. <laughs> that sounds so horrible. I'm really sorry. It's not. And the next thing that I don't like to be asked is, is your baby a corona baby? So when lockdown first started, everyone was saying, oh, that in nine months time, there's gonna be so many new babies about because like husbands and wives and boyfriends and girlfriends are in lockdown together and got nothing better to do but to make babies. And um, for a while, Jimmy and I were thrown in that category by certain people that we know. Um, and I don't think it's, inf I don't think that's fair because I don't want my child to think that the only reason it was conceived or the only reason it exists is because there was a global pandemic. My child is gonna exist because I planned for it and tried for it and wanted it to happen so it did happen. It's not just something that happened because of a global pandemic for any other reason or for any other reason. Not that I'm taking away from babies that are conceived in coronavirus um, in lockdown, but our baby wasn't. And I don't think it's fair to, to, to throw our baby in that category, you know? To say that babies, any baby, is a corona baby or was only conceived because of coronavirus is quite insensitive to parents that may have been trying for babies for years and they only finally managed to conceive during coronavirus because they finally weren't that stressed at work because they were furloughed because they had a bit of time to put their feet up. like it's not fair to take that away from them. Um, and then to just say, oh, your baby's a corona baby, a lockdown baby. So it's, it's not something that I, it's not a phrase I agree with, to be honest. And I think it can do more harm than good. The more people say that. But anyway, next question. So the next three questions, I'm gonna actually answer them together because they've all got quite a similar answer, so it's, it's easier just to put it all in one. So the first one is from Sam, and it's, do people come and touch your belly? The next one is from Charlie, and it is, how has COVID affected your pregnancy? And the next one is from Teresa, and it is, is there anything about pregnancy, birth, motherhood, or motherhood that you're nervous about? Whew. See, I'm out of breath just saying that. Give me a couple of seconds to do my eyebrows and catch my breath. 
first of all, do people come and touch your belly? Um, no, obviously, um, there's been no touching because of COVID. People can only stay within two meters of me. So the only people I've actually been in physical contact with are Jimmy and my mum. And they give my belly a hell of a lot more attention than me these days. Um, like Jimmy will wake up in the morning and he will kiss the bump good morning before he kisses me good morning. But <laughs> I think I've just got to get used to that now. I think it's just going to be a thing. Um, and that's okay. Like that's one of the things I love about him is that he's going to be such a great dad. So I'm just going to go in with my Too Faced dark chocolate bronzer. Um, right, next question. How has COVID affected your pregnancy? It's been shit. I'm not going to lie. Sorry if you've got kids around or sorry if kids can hear me. But it really has been absolutely rubbish. Um, the midwife appointments, it's only been... Min uh, I've... I, ugh. The midwife appointments have been only me that's allowed in. Um, Jimmy hasn't been allowed into any of them since the 16th of March. And that was when we had our 20 week scan. Um, so luckily we had our 12 and our 20 week scan before lockdown. So he got to come to basically the first half of our appointments in the pregnancy. Um, and he was there when we first got to hear the heartbeat, which was nice. Um, but yeah, he hasn't been to any since the 20 week one. And I've had to do them all on my own. Not that there's been that many, but it would have been nice for him to be there. So the shops are closed. So I haven't been able to go and test or look or play or do anything with the stuff that I want to buy for the baby. So like the pram, for example, um, I don't really want to buy one without getting my hands on it and popping it up and popping it down and seeing how quickly I can get it like into the boot of my car or just practical things like that, you know, um, that just I haven't been able to do because the shops aren't open and justifiably they're not open, but it doesn't help me in preparing for my baby. And we want to get our car seat. We want to get one that ma not matches, but, um, that works with the pram so you have to get like special adapters so we want to buy that in store as well and we just can't do that and you can't leave the hospital with your baby unless it's in a car seat because it's not safe for it to travel unless you're walking home from the hospital which i'm not going to be so um yeah that's not ideal that the shop not being open aren't ideal but that's like that's something we can still get around. We've managed to order some things online. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we are gonna be able to get into store. Um, and it's not gonna be much longer that we'll be stuck in this situation. Sorry, I didn't mention I'm actually going in with my Lion King Sir John Luminous palette, uh, the contour sculpting palette, just to powder contour a little bit. Although probably don't need to because I cream contoured yep didn't need to do that done too much when do I ever not do too much um okay put the contour palette down yes I get it so I'm just gonna pop a little bit more bronzer on because I feel like I should have done bronzer after contour um the other thing that's been a bit of a downer during coronavirus is that I have I've got actually five or six friends that are expecting or friends or family members that are expecting at the same time as me and I haven't been able to see any of them so we haven't been able to compare bumps we haven't been able to go to pregnant yoga classes together or anything like that like I just haven't been able to spend as much time with my friends and family as I wanted to and for them to get to know bump before it comes you know so my really really close cousin is uh pregnant and we haven't actually seen each other since maybe december so she didn't know that i was pregnant because we hadn't told anyone yet and obviously neither of us had bumps but 
now we're both pregnant at the same time but she's having her baby tomorrow and we haven't actually been able to see each other's bumps even just like take a photo together of our bumps together or anything like that so we've got photoshop one i'm hoping that she's had time to take a picture so that we can photoshop them together and pretend that our bumps got to meet each other um but the babies will obviously get to meet each other eventually it's just a matter of time but yeah it would have been nice to be able to see that um jimmy's family they haven't been able to see bump or meet bump um yet anyway um, and it's their first the first baby in their family or the first grandchild so they've seen it on video chat uh, but it's just not the same really it's not the same as being able to see it and see the shape of it and a lot of people like to say it's a girl or a boy based on the shape of it so yeah that they haven't had the same sort of experience as as my mum has really uh, in terms of a baby shower, uh, trying to decide whether we were going to do that virtually or in real life. And we've ended up deciding that we're going to do it in real life and just try and keep a social distance because the real rules are a little bit more relaxed now. Um, but yeah, that I haven't been able to, we haven't been able to plan that sort of in advance or anything like that. That's only really been decided in the last week or so. Um, so the other effect that COVID has had is that I am quite into going to the gym. Um, I'm quite into spinning and uh, going for bike rides and things like that. And um, our gym has obviously closed down. And I don't know when it will open again, but I've been able to do my um, like pregnancy video workouts at home with like pregnancy yoga and pregnancy Pilates and stuff like that. But it's just not the same as like weight training and actually being in the gym environment and getting stuff done. So that's been a bit rubbish. So the Teresa's question, is there anything that I'm nervous about? Um, how long have you got? <laughs> um, I'm nervous about giving birth in general, to be honest. I was nervous about it before the lockdown and before coronavirus was even a thing, as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I was nervous about pushing a child out um, or pushing a baby out. But I am still nervous about it. Like, it's, I go through waves of thinking, okay, I can do this, I can push this baby out. And then I think, oh my god, no, I can't, I can't push that, I can't push a baby out of my, like, I, I can't do that. <laughs> um, and I have come to the point at the moment where I decided to stop, stop thinking about it that much, because the more I think about it, the more anxious I'm getting about it, and... There's no point really having a plan of like, oh, I'm going to have all of this pain relief or I'm, more, I'm not going to have this pain relief or I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that because I've got no idea how I'm going to react until I'm there and it's happening and it, I'm experiencing it all. So I'm just going to go in with an open mind and roll with the punches and see what happens because... If I try and plan it all to a T and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, it's not going to go that way anyway. Um, so I've just got to be realistic about my and, and manage my expectations of what's going to happen. I am even more nervous now uh, about giving birth than I was then when I first found out I was pregnant, purely because in the hospital that I'm going to be giving birth at, Jimmy is not allowed to come in with me. So when I first get there, they have to make sure that I'm in established labour um, and that like baby's actually coming and then he'll be allowed in. Um, I originally wanted him and my mum there, but I'm only allowed to have one birthing partner. And um, he's only allowed to stay for two hours after the baby's born. So as soon as uh, we are moved to the back to the labour ward, so I'll go in, be put on the labour ward, I think, um, and then moved to the delivery suite, 
once I'm in the delivery suite, that's when Jimmy can come in. And then when we move back again to the labor ward, once baby arrives, then he has to go home and he's not allowed back in. He can just come back to pick us up whenever that may be, whether that, whether we stay in hospital for two days, two hours or two weeks, he's not allowed back in. Um, so that scares me a little bit. Not even a little bit, that scares me a lot. I have no doubt that I can do it and that I will do it. I don't have a choice at the moment. Um, I would have just preferred him to be there, that's all. For all of it, not just in and out. And for him to be able to spend more than two hours with his newborn son or daughter But I can't do anything about that. And when I first found out, I was really, really upset. It, um, I was quite shocked. Not shocked because we're in a pandemic, right? You can't, <laughs> so much stuff is happening that you can't be shocked by everything or anything almost. But I just would have liked my husband to be with me, you know? <laughs> for all of it and my mum I'm incredibly close to my mum she is one of my best friends and to not have her there and have her strength and her support while I'm going through all of that is terrifying I'll um she'll be there when we get home and it's like August is still eight nine weeks away so it may change between now and then and I'm really really hoping that it does because I'd love to have my mum there and I'd love Jimmy to be able to stay longer. Something in my gut is telling me that it's not going to change but I'm really really hoping that it is. Right so I'm just going in with my Milani Blush Trio palette on my Morphe Jeffree Star JS20 brush. So. The next part of this question is something which is hard for me to talk about and I wanted this video to be a real happy exciting video and something that expectant mothers can watch if they've got any questions or just something that me and Bump can look back on in 10 years time and, and remember how happy and excited I was but um, this question the answer to this question is not going to be like that so I'm going to try and get it over and done with quite quickly. Um, motherhood. I am incredibly nervous about motherhood and with everything that's going on in the world at the moment, um, and I'm not talking about coronavirus now, I'm talking about um, Black Lives Matter and what black people are going through in countries all over the world, mainly in America, but it's happening in other places too. Um, to bring a child into a world where that's, that's happening so often and so regularly and to the point where I'm not surprised when I see it on the news anymore. Um, that's terrifying. The fact that our child could be, it could be darker than me, it could be lighter than me, it could be the same colour as Jimmy, which is a little bit lighter than me, I don't know. I don't know what colour it's going to be, it doesn't matter what colour it's going to be in the eyes of the people we're talking about, all that it matters is it's not white. Um, and I find that incredibly, incredibly hard to deal with. And I know that it's my responsibility to educate my child and to, um, to make sure that my child is part of a generation that, that tries to make a change in these matters and that he knows, he or she 
knows the names of people like George Floyd. I'm not going to carry on talking about that because I don't I don't want to get emotional about it. I'm going to pop some links either at the start or the end or both of this video um, of how we can educate our children and make sure that the next generation is that they don't experience any of it. Um, right. So I am highlighting my face with Physicians Formula Butter Highlighter in the shade Rose Gold. Um, and the next question is from Sam and it is, do you want a hospital or a home birth? So as it stands, that, has, that decision has been taken out of my hands. If I wanted a home birth, I can't have one because the hospital that I'm um, having the baby at is not currently supporting them. Um, I would have to either go to a private midwife or um, to a different hospital if I wanted to do that. And if I went to a different hospital and ended up having to ultimately travel there with baby once it comes, then it would be much further away than our current hospital is from our house. So at the moment the hospital is only nine minutes away. Um, if I change to a different one, it could be half an hour, 40 minutes to an hour. So I'm not willing to do that. I'm not gonna change hospitals. Um, but we did talk about it as a family. I talked to my mum, I talked to Jimmy about it because I was so upset that my mum wasn't gonna be there that even though some hospitals had decided to start doing them again in the area, I considered swapping just so that I could have a home birth supported by a different hospital. But we decided that that wasn't fair on the baby and that it was too much of a risk. Um, and they, they don't generally recommend having home births with your first baby anyway. So we decided that I was gonna stick to the plan and have, have the baby at the hospital and cross our fingers that mum will be able to come in by August. So next question is from Laurie and it is, do you plan on breast or bottle feeding? So I plan on breastfeeding, but I'm under no illusions that it is not easy and that it is a hell of a lot easier said than done. Um, a lot of women have every intention to breastfeed and for whatever reason, they may not be able to. Um, but it doesn't happen for everyone. If I can, I will be, because Jimmy and I both believe that it's what mother, mother nature intended and it's what's best for the baby. So if I can breastfeed, I will be. Right, so I have got two more questions left to answer and they are both from Jimmy. I'm just gonna pop off camera, I'm gonna do my mascara and do my lashes and do something with my hair and then I will come back and we'll do the last two questions, okay? Okay guys, so lashes are on and mascara and these are the Dull Beauty Taylor Lash and they're really, really pretty. They're really spiky and I don't normally like a spiky lash but I'm quite feeling these. So I'm gonna put my lip on now and I'm gonna use the Sir John Luminous Lion King lip, this one in uh, Pounce. So, we are all done. There are two more questions to answer from my husband. And the first one is, what is your least favorite thing about being pregnant so far? So, the least favorite thing is just in general, the anxiety of it all. So, um, the anxiety of the first 12 weeks, wanting to know that baby was okay and that it was growing well um, and that, it was healthy more than anything and viable. So the anxiety of Boris Johnson's announcement um, when he said that pregnant women were in the vulnerable category, that really terrified me. Um, that was the first time that I cried uh, in 
cried sad tears in pregnancy uh, but just because I was pre I was I was terrified um, and the anxiety of giving birth um, trying to make the right decisions when it comes to giving birth and making sure that baby comes out in the most healthy way for the baby um, and <laughs> the pain I'm really scared of the pain but um, yeah that's all stuff that I'm yet to face so it, it check back with me after August I might be absolutely fine about it and the anxiety was like no big deal but yeah we'll see um but yeah it can it's pregnancy is not easy it's really really not easy it's something full full of anxiety and I'm not normally an anxious person I very very rarely get anxious about anything I wasn't anxious about our wedding day I had two of them. I wasn't anxious about getting married abroad. Like I'm just not, I'm quite a chilled out person. Um, and pregnancy has shown me that that's not the case all the time. Um, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it will be when it comes to giving birth and I'll take it all in my stride. But yeah, um, just the anxiety of pregnancy. That's, that's been the, my least favorite thing. Um, so Jimmy's next question was, what is your favorite thing about being pregnant so far? Um, so my favorite thing is that there's a little human in me. Um, I don't really know how to put it into words, but hearing baby's heartbeat, which if I can, I'm going to um, try because I've, I've recorded it. So I will try and play that for you. It's normally around 140 beats per minute. Um, and it can, yeah, that's, it's, it's normally quite fast, so don't be shocked if it's really fast, but I will try and play that for you now. So yeah, hearing baby's heartbeat was incredibly special. Uh, seeing the baby at all the scans and seeing that it's growing as it should be and that it's healthy. Um, feeling the baby move and roll around, especially now, now that it, um, like when it, when it elbows or kicks me, I can almost feel the outline of a foot or a elbow. If you put, if I have my hand where it, wherever it happens to be. Um, yeah, so I can feel, I can actually feel human shape in there, which is really, really nice. And, um, my, most most favorite thing and i'm going to try and say this without getting too emotional but i'm pregnant so i do cry a lot <laughs> is um seeing how excited jimmy is to to be a dad he's he's gonna be the best dad ever he's so protective and so caring and loving and I know I said things earlier about how like he gives a bumper kiss before me in the morning, but that just goes to show how much he loves this little human already, even though he hasn't met it, he hasn't, it's not inside him, he doesn't have the same connection to it that I do, but he is so, he's just going to be the most amazing dad. <laughs> I can't ruin my makeup because I haven't taken pictures of it yet. So come on, Nikia, get together. <sighs> Seeing our little family develop, that's been exciting and my favourite thing so far. And I just can't wait to see what the future holds and to see how our family becomes real and how we settle into life as a family and how we grow in this world. Sorry, I've recomposed myself. So, um, yeah, I, that's all the questions that I've had that um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I maybe taught you guys something or you guys feel like you've got to know me a bit better um, or know what I've been going through at least or experiencing for the last 31 weeks. It's been a hell of a journey so far and there's still more weeks to go and more to come and yeah there's so much more excitement still which it's it's an exciting time for all of us for 
for everyone involved and um, yeah, I can't wait to see what the future holds. We are, we're gonna be moving in a couple of weeks. So I apologize if the structure of my YouTube channel is a bit mishmash because I'm gonna be pre-filming some things. Um, some things I'll, I might film and from where we've moved to, so you, it will be a different setup. Um, but as of uh, like two, two and a bit weeks now until we move, so yeah. Things might be a little bit jumbled up and I am going to start pre-filming stuff so that when baby comes I don't have to rush into getting back on YouTube so you guys will get to see when baby comes. It just might be a little bit delayed because um, things are going to be pre-filmed. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it's not the most dramatic makeup look but um, it's been a hard few days with all of this this stuff that's happening in the world with the Black Lives Matter and the protests and everything. Um, I haven't been feeling the most creative and I wanted to use my Jackie Ina palette because that comes from a very strong black woman. I haven't got my Juvia's Place palette yet, that's on its way via Teresa so hopefully that will be here soon. Um, and if anything, doing my makeup today has taught me that I don't actually have enough makeup owned by black or from black brands um so the next few months will be spent investing in some black brands and exploring their brands a bit more rather than just going with the big big makeup brands um but yeah i'm gonna pop some information down in the description below and link some important videos and um some articles that might help people educate their their friends their family their children um, thank you so much for sticking around and watching this video if you have watched it the whole way through. I've got no doubt it's going to be a really, 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 really long one and um, full of some highs and lows. But that's pregnancy for you, I guess. And that's the world that we've been in. In Well, for me, this whole year has been full of highs and lows and we're only halfway through. But um, it can only get better, right? Um, fingers crossed anyway um, thank you so so much for watching guys please don't forget to like comment and subscribe um, if you have any more questions for me drop them down in the comments and I will try and answer them for you yeah let's just stay in touch let me know about your pregnancy experiences if you've got any stories that you want to tell me maybe not horror stories because maybe tell me them after August after I've been through mine um, but yeah any stories that you've got for me I'd love to hear them and yeah, thank you so, so much for watching guys. Hopefully I've been able to include some pictures and photos of Bump and myself because I really want you guys to be able to see how Bump's coming along. I, I might put some stage by stage photos up if I have any. Um, but yeah, until the next one, thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you on the next one. Bye.